All right, what's on the bench today? This is a uh, WaveTech 3000. I thought this was, I worked at WaveTech in the mid 80s. And I thought that this particular product was the best product that WaveTech ever built. I really like, I really like this one. This is the way that it's laid out. It's simple to understand. It's really functional. Um, it's very quick to set things. The, the there, there's, uh, so what is it? It's a RF generator, okay? Uh, one to 520 megahertz. Um, and uh, so the frequency range is great. Uh, very, very easy to set the numbers. Uh, if you can read right here, it's 0.001% uh, accuracy. Um, so it was very stable, very, very quick and easy to use. Um, has a nice output attenuator. This one needs maybe a little bit of oil, uh, grease. Um, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one when I worked for the company. Um, uh, and this one I got off of eBay for 150 bucks. I don't know if it works, um, but I thought it'd be great for the channel. Um, so uh, let's see here. This one is actually, let me, let me kind of move the camera here just a second. All right, so this one was purchased by the, from the uh, Tucker Company. This is a very uh, uh, old company that did test and measurement equipment. I've, I've dealt with them before. Uh, so this is, uh, obviously they do a lot of used instruments. So if you want to get a secondhand instrument, they might actually rent them as well, but I don't remember. Um, but yeah, from the Tucker organization. And because it was purchased from Tucker, uh, it was also supplied with a manual. Um, and it's for this particular, it's for this particular uh, instrument. Uh, Technician tech checked it out. It was calibrated in 1993. Calibration's due in 94, so it's overdue. Um, but yeah, uh, complete uh, service manual. Uh, the WaveTech manuals were good. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at the uh, other side of this thing. It does have some type of strange programming connector. I guess you can can digitally program this someplace else, but it's pretty weird. It does have a, uh, a dedicated power cord, so not a big fan of that. Uh, but yeah, uh, these were made uh, in, uh, designed and made in Rockland, uh, Indiana. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's turn it on. All right, uh, output, let's look that up the spectrum analyzer. And zero dBm is fine. Uh, output uh, deviation tune. Yeah, we'll be using that. There's an RF input here. Uh, there's a, a frequency vernier, but there's a cal position. And then you set the uh, uh, value that you want here. So let's put in 100 megahertz. You can have CW, AM modulated, FM modulated times one, IFM modulated times 10. You can modulate those at 400 hertz, 1000 hertz, or an external input. And then if you're on internal, you can do percent modulation uh, or uh, kilohertz modulation for FM. So it's laid out really easy to use. So we'll do a CW, turn the switch on. It says 0.001%. And uh, this will light up until you, if you take it out of, uh, out of Cal, it'll say you're using the Vernier mode. And if you put it into Cal, it says you've, uh, you're in the accurate mode now. Um, unfortunately, there is no output. Yeah, so this thing does not work. It does not work. So I think that's good for the channel, right? <laughs> if it was working, it'd be boring. Um, so we will have to do a bunch of repair on this. I don't know what's wrong with it. Uh, the meter's not moving. Um, so there's just no, no goes out. So we'll have to figure out what's, uh, what's going on. Um, we'll take a quick peek inside and then wrap this video up. Next video will be me trying to see what's wrong with it. All right, a couple screws on the top and we can take the whole cover off and yep, looks like WaveTech. 
Uh, so all of the modules here are in cans and they're all interconnected with cables. And yeah, this looks like a bunch of loveliness. A little hand-wired board down there. That's kind of interesting. What? It looks like maybe it's a user modification. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Let's get you down a little closer here. All right, we have a standard power supply here. There's a, a fuse and uh, some nice orange sprigs. Um, there's a bunch of uh, TO220 regulators on a heat sink that goes to the chassis. Uh, here's the transformer over here. And uh, yeah, the tops of these aren't labeled. That's kind of a disappointment. A lot of times these are labeled for what functionality they do. Um, but we can see um, uh, this big can here is the output attenuator. Okay, and like I said, that's kind of clunky. I want to grease that up. Uh, there's a whole bunch of calibrations here. Uh, I don't know exactly what all those would be for. Maybe the AM modulation, the meter meter calibration, things like that. There's a funny little switch right there. I wonder what that guy does. Hmm. Uh, but I have the manual, right? Uh, here's all of the thumb wheel switches. Here's that fun little board I kind of mentioned. Let me uh, move you over. Yeah, I don't know. That I don't know if that looks factory or not. It certainly, certainly is strange looking. Um... And nice thing about working on these is you can just disconnect the different pieces, right? Go through it one by one. Uh, figure out which one's the oscillator, then which one's the amplifier, and which one's the modulator, and you just kind of step around and uh, go through the whole thing. Uh, it's interesting that these, uh, these are loosey-goosey wires, and it actually has some hard line here. It's got a hard line here and a big hard line here. This is the output. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So the uh, uh, final comes in here. It gets attenuated. And then it goes into the final amplifier and out. So instead of getting... Instead of the output coming from the attenuator, it comes from the amplifier. Just kind of a different way of doing it. Yeah. Nice. All right, this will be fun to work on. Um, I did work on another wave tech and it was not fun to work on, so hopefully this one's better. Um, yeah, looks good.